Hi students, somehow I missed Yates's Among School Children last week, so I'd like to talk about it now because it really is a beautiful and important poem, and it's similar, uh, and I'm using Thomas Metcher's uh, uh, analysis to help me um, walk you through this wonderful poem, which is kind of like in spirit, Love Song of J.L. for Prufrock, for it asks a question. It is in the interrogative mood, and the question is, what is life? What is it to be human? And what is a meaningful life? And so here is this 60 year old man, the poet, walking in among little girls, a girls' school, and he's the school inspector. And he's talking to the nun, who's the teacher. And instead of her, instead of the church uh, doing a, a catechism to him, he's doing a catechism of the little girls and of how the uh, school is run. But he begins to also ask questions about himself. It brings up memories, deep, utter, um, wild uh, memories of a Lydian body a modern Helen Maud Gunn, whom he never got over. He was intensely in love with her, and they were good friends, but she never really wanted to go beyond that. But it, it didn't stop him from idolizing her, loving her intensely, and writing incredibly beautiful poems about her. And so in this poem, in, in a way, um, it seems to go dark uh, and so, as he looks at Western philosophy and what Western philosophy tells us is um, uh, the way to, to look at human meaning. And we can look at Plato, who says meaning, uh, importance is in the, the ideal, is in the abstract uh, uh, realm, is in the soul, basically. And then there's Plato, uh, his student, Aristotle, who says, no, 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 it is in the body. It is in the material world. That's where meaning is to be found. And Yeats also says for Western culture, it's not only Greco-Roman philosophy, it is all, also Christianity. And he talks about the presences with a capital P. And this would be Catholicism, which was so important for Ireland. But um, I want to, so he, he is trying to find a space and a way to make meaning for, um, for human beings, not only himself, uh, but the little school children there. What are they going to grow up to be? And it's beautiful how he, he, his memory works in this poem and how um, he, you know, it's a Proustian sort of, oh, well, I remember this. And then that leads to another memory. And so he looks at these little girls, and like Keats, um, like the Romantics, he is able to imagine her right before him, Maud Gunn, as a little girl, even though she is now in her 60s, like he is. And um, But he is able to imagine her as a little girl at the same time that he imagines Quattrocento Italian painters wanting to paint her now. And I can really identify with uh, Yeats because he's in his 60s, I'm in my 60s, and when I look in the mirror, that's not who I thought I was. I still am young in heart, and I feel young in my mind's eye. Um, and so he talks about the, the mother who gave birth to him and s sent him out as a young man. And if she were alive now, would she uh, be happy about having put him through the pain of living, that life is a painful experience. Um, and then he, he makes a judgment about the presences, the, the religion, and how religion, um, it shouldn't be beauty born out of its own despair. And religion shouldn't put the body, make the body bruised in order to pleasure the soul. That somehow, the self must be able to be both um, ideal, the soul, but material, the body, and that the two must be unified, and that's that unity of opposites that the Romantics were trying so, so hard to bring together, and Yeats is romantic in that sense. He's trying so hard on a philosophical level 
level to bring together the body and soul. And the philosophy, the whole philosophy of Western civilization and come up with an answer that isn't, well, dare I eat a peach as Prufrock does. He wants to try to find uh, some uh, epiphany and he does at the end. Oh, chestnut tree, great rooted blossomer, are you the leaf, the blossom or the bowl? A body swayed to music Oh, brightening glance, how can we know the dancer from the dance? And that brightening glance is the vision. That's the description of the vision. He sees the tree and he sees the dancer and he says, there's no way to uh, understand the tree without thinking of it as at one and the same time, the leaf, the blossom, and the bowl. And the dancer as both the music, the dance, and the body flowing in through that time of dance. And you can't pinpoint one moment during the dance that is the essential dance. It's the dancer and the dance. And as a poet, that is Yeats's answer to this question, the catechism of, is life meaningful? How can it be meaningful? And to recognize the self, we can only be blossoming in, in our actions, our labor can only be blossoming and dancing, and that notice it's uh, in the present, the blossoming and dancing, it's not in the past. And, and it folds in the future and the past together in the present. So all three are one. So you see the sort of unity that Yeats is seeking, seeking in this gorgeous poem. And you should read it aloud to try to get at the imagery, you know, you can't, always say, well, this is what the poem means. The poem means the imagery that it is presenting to you. It means through the sounds, uh, the sound symbolism. So read it aloud and see if you can come up with that glance, that brightening glance, that vision that he, it, that he is trying to see in the same way that he was able to bring alive right in his presence gods do that. Maud Gunn when she was a little girl. All right. I hope you enjoyed this poem.